Welcome to the Retro Hack Shack. I'm Aaron Newcomb. Uh, right now, I am in the middle of filming my part two of fixing up the PC XT clone. And a lot of people recommended I use Spinrite. The problem with Spinrite is it takes forever when there's a lot of errors on the disc, which apparently this one has. So this is gonna run for, who knows, 24 hours, 48 hours. And I'm a little afraid that this isn't gonna get done in time to get the episode out, and so I thought I would do something else. In the meantime, it's quite possible that this thing is going to run all night long. All night long. So on a recent trip down to one of my usual haunts, uh, often there is stuff being donated either while I'm there or just before I get there. And so I kind of get a chance to take a look at what's being donated first um, before they've even had a chance to sort through it. If you'd like to find out where I find my retro equipment and deals and things like that, uh, there's a video that I did about where I find stuff and I will link that in up above so you can check that out if you're curious. Now, on this occasion, I stumbled across this particular box which had just been donated either that day or the day before, hadn't been gone through yet, and uh, I offered $20 for the box and that was agreed to. And so I thought what I'd do is just go through this box and see what we can find uh, uh, either of nostalgia or potential value in the box. I haven't gone through the whole thing. I did, however, notice one thing just peeking in through the top of the box that made me think this was worth at least $20. And so I felt pretty good about taking a chance on this box. Now, I don't have any intention of selling any of these items necessarily, but I thought it might be fun as we go through this for me to take a look on eBay and see what you might pay there for, for some items that have been sold. And I'll keep a running tally as we go through this. So the first thing I pull out is a, a AC to DC adapter and it says Yamaha on it. And I can see sticking up in the box, there's some speakers. So I'm guessing those are probably Yamaha speakers. Let's see if we can pull those out. And yes, indeed, this is a pair of Yamaha YST-M10, YST-M10 powered monitor speakers. So right away, that's a pretty good find, I think, uh, out of this box. I'm sure that's worth $20. That's not exactly what I had, what I saw, but I'm really happy with that. I've got the power adapter, which is often missing with these speakers, and uh, I'll definitely be testing those out to see if they work. Here's a ubiquitous Atari controller. It's in pretty good shape, actually. Uh, it seems to be pretty tight. Button seems to work, so yeah, nice. Here's something interesting. Looks like a uh, something in a leather case here. Oh, it's a little calculator. A SysTech calculator. And it is not working, but it must have been a handy little pocket calculator for someone because it has its own protective case that slides right in there. It's very cute. Uh, probably not worth that much, but definitely uh, a very cool thing to have. I can imagine somebody carrying this around with them in their, their front pocket, maybe having it available, you know, just to pull out and do a quick calculation. So pretty cool. Okay, here we have a GE answering system. This doesn't, I think this is a digital one. I don't think it has a tape in it, um, but it's in really good shape. Someone took good care of it. Looks like it, oh, it's got the instructions right here that you can pull out and read. I do not need an answering system, but um, kind of interesting anyway. Okay, next up we have a device and some manuals. I think I know what this is, and maybe you do too, just by looking at this dock with the 3Com logo. It must be a Palm Pilot. Um, and here's the, all the manuals that go with it. Handbook, Palm 3. So uh, comment below if you had a, a Palm Pilot or especially a Palm 3, 3Com Palm 3. But let's just take a look. I'm sure that's what's in here. Again, in a nice protective case. And yeah, interesting. Uh, hopefully there's no, okay. I just want to make sure there was no personal information or, or cards there or anything, but yeah, it's a Palm Pilot, uh, Palm 3. And that just, uh, so it's, it's got a, it's got a, uh, this case, transparent case has a pushback here to protect the uh, little latch to protect the contacts. So yeah, this should actually dock. Yeah, and sure enough, it does. Docks right in there. 
connects with a, a COM port, serial port. So this will be fun to try out. Maybe perhaps a little episode all on its own. That's pretty cool. Oh, and here's the manual that goes with the answering machine. That's pretty funny. Do you guys keep your manuals? I don't typically keep my manuals at the time that I'm buying them. I always wish I kept them later on when I'm going back through all this stuff. Okay, this is a mother load of Sound Blaster, text-to-speech, Sound Blaster 16, SCSI 2, uh, Creative Lab Sound Blaster Pro. Somebody was a Sound Blaster aficionado. Here's a Sound Blaster 16 manual. So I've got a ton of Sound Blaster manuals. Here's Sound, Sound Blaster PC Animate Plus. Was that software or was that hardware? I don't know, maybe there's some stuff in here, but a lot of Sound Blaster manuals. <laughs> no way. Here's another one. What's this? Oh, it's a Sony Clio. No way. Got the little SD card up top here. Uh, again, in a nice little protective case. Very cool. This would be really fun to check out. Does it have the, yeah, and it has the stylus even that goes with it. A lot of times those get lost in the shuffle. So very cool, Sony Clio. The funny thing is the Clio is almost the same size as the calculator. Here's the calculator in front. And the Clio is just a little bit larger than that pocket calculator. All right, next up, there's a random pack of tape cartridges. Um, these are Colorado brand cartridges, uh, 700 for use with Jumbo model, 700 tape backup system, pre-formatted. So they've got a little bit of gunk on them, on the package, but these might be okay, especially if they're sealed. All right, there we go. Yeah, these are sealed, don't look like they've ever been used. So if I ever come across a tape drive that takes these uh, 700 tapes, jumbo 700 tapes, I'll have some to test out on it. Hey, and look at this, this is something you don't see. Uh, mini discs, Sony mini discs. You definitely don't see these very often in North America. Mini disc was just not as popular here as it was in Europe. Oh, that just came right off. Yeah, but there's totally four unused Sony mini disc, new old stock, it's still in the cellophane. So those will be pretty fun if I ever get a mini disc player to test out random power cord. Here's another random power cord, another random power cord. Okay, now here's some TIAC uh, cassettes. High density magnetic tape cassettes, TX CT500, still in the wrapper. Those look gorgeous. Those look really nice. I'm um, not sure if these were used for data, but these are not the cheapies. These are expensive tapes. Okay, I couldn't resist. I couldn't wait any longer. This is the thing that I knew was in here. It's almost still in the box. I wonder if it's still in here. It looks like this has been opened. This is a Sound Blaster AW64. Um, I believe it's a 16-bit ISA version. At least that's what the uh, the picture looks like. Let's just open this up and see if the sound card is still in here. Okay, if this is still in the box, I will still I will be pretty surprised. And there's a cable, some plastic. Yes, it is very nice. 16-bit creative AW64 card. I mean, I don't think these are particularly super valuable or anything. I'll look it up on eBay and see what it's worth, but really nice to have one of these in the box with all the manuals and everything. Uh, yeah, that's really, really cool. Manual here says it supports DOS, Windows 3.x, and Windows 95 DOS mode. Welcome to the world of plug and play. So that'll be fun to add to uh, maybe like a 486 build or something with a 16-bit ISA card slot in it. Hello, kitty. Hello, kitty. Did you come to check this stuff out? It says it includes Eradicator and Magic Carpet 2, and it even has the uh, original sticker on here. It looks like this sold for $199 originally. And this is model number SB4380. And it looks like this guy was definitely a techie because here's a bootleg copy of Windows 98. That'll be nice to add to the collection. I've got a couple of these floating around, but it's always hard to find them when you're looking for them. Okay, now I'm not gonna be able to figure out what this is. It's something somebody put together. There's power that plugs into a power supply. Maybe it's a programmer. It says serial adapter. It's got a three-way switch on it. I uh, know it's got two three-way switches on it. Wow. So I have no idea what this is. Uh, very much a hack job. It's got a serial connector and uh, maybe a programmer. Maybe this plugs into a JTAG. 
connector or something like that. So if you have any ideas what this is, I'll try to get a close up of it and put it on the screen. But let me know in the comments below because I have no idea what this would be for. Okay, more Sound Blaster stuff. It looks like these are the original discs. There's a whole set of Sound Blaster installation discs here. That's really nice to have along with the Sound Blaster card. Okay, something else in a pouch. This one actually says creative as well. Oh, it's a creative camera. Wow. Oh, and an old pair of headphones in case you want those. I don't want those, but this creative uh, clip on, looks like it clips on the back on your monitor or something. Um, don't know, not exactly sure. But uh, yeah, a little, an old creative webcam. Let's see, this is model number uh, VF0250, it looks like. And of course, it's in a carry case like everything else in this uh, in this box seems to be. And more Sound Blaster discs, PC Animate. There's the PC Animate uh, Presidio software. HSC Interactive, more Sound Blaster. So yeah, really nice to have these drivers and programs. Okay, I'm not going to get everything out of this uh, this next lot of stuff, but there's a lot of these um, little test boards and things, little adapters for obviously plugging in hard drives. This one looks like it's a USB adapter. Uh, perhaps you plug in a SATA drive here and you get USB. It's almost like these would go maybe in uh, you know one of those uh, enclosures or something that you find, or maybe this guy hacked these things together. I have no idea. Okay, who remembers Turbo Pascal? So this book was in here. This is for version three. I think this is the handbook that went with Turbo Pascal. Very popular back in the day. And it even has the disc here bookmarked uh, chapter 14 file types. So this is the, this is for PC DOS, uh, put out by Borland, of course, one of the big soft software, uh, uh, houses back in the day. So, um, I don't, I don't know if I'm really interested in learning Turbo Pascal at this point, but it's neat to have a little piece of history because this was certainly very, very popular. So there's quite a number of cables. This looks like maybe a homemade SCSI cable. Uh, it says 451 on it. I don't know what you would use this long ribbon cable for. There's quite a number of these in the box. There's some serial, uh, you know, 25 pin to, to nine pin adapters. Um, so there's quite a few of these. I'm not going to get all of these out, but there's quite a few little cables and things in here that this guy had. I'm assuming it's a guy. Could have been a girl. You never know. Now here's something interesting. Pro Action Replay. Is this an actual action replay device? It's got the, uh, it's got a port up here and then it's got like a parallel port back here. Wow. Pro Action Replay. And there's a switch on the side. It looks a bit like a knockoff though. I'm going to have to look this up. Uh, I'm not going to even bother taking this out of the bag. It's just a random programmable thermostat. Of course, with the manual. So this will probably go back to e-waste. Okay, whoever this was had to had to be an engineer because there's a uh, there's a Rolodex thing. I guess you could uh, store all your contacts in here. It's very small. And then also this Sunway electronic calculator, uh, another calculator. So I'm sure this would work. It looks like a little phone. Look at that. <laughs> It looks like a little phone, but it's a calculator. This almost looks like one of those things that you would get at a trade show or something that costs like, you know, 50 cents to make, but it still is pretty cool. I like it. Here's the live cam software um, for that camera. And it looks like a little microphone adapter, clip on microphone that you can use. And this is a little bit random, but um, always glad to see these dongles. A lot of times you'll buy a laptop and it'll have a PCM CIA card in there but it won't have the dongle that goes with it. And this is for an ethernet adapter for an ethernet card. Yeah, Linksys. So it's quite possible that this would work with a number of Linksys ethernet PCM CIA cards. So I'm always glad to see these when I can find them. Now, who back in the day had a MSDN subscription? So believe it or not, I was an MCSE back in the day. I don't know if you can see this, but this definitely came out of the, the I had a big uh, uh, folder full of these discs with Microsoft software on them. This is Windows NT 4.0 terminal server edition development platform. This brings back a lot of memory of sitting in those MCSE classes, getting my uh, certification um, back in the day, and then having these discs to play with at the end. Was, it's kind of neat. All right, here's a random set of MIDI cables, MIDI adapter cables. Here's a very sad looking quick shot uh, joystick just kind of flapping around. I don't know if I could get that working again. Um, maybe I'll, maybe I'll take a stab and see. 
I don't remember I don't remember using one quite like this, but it's really floppy. I don't think it's supposed to be like that. But perhaps it had some it's possible it had some rubber bands to use as the the centering force here that you would pull against. So it's possible that the rubber bands have just snapped. And if I open this up, I might be able to fix it. So this might be a, a quick fix video. And so here's a few more random items. This is uh, NEC software. It says IBM DPI on the fly. I don't know. Mac version, disk one. Is this some sort of programming? It says multi-sync. Oh, this is for multi-sync monitors. NEC multi-sync monitors. That's what that is. This must be the driver for it or something, the Mac driver. And another power cord uh, in there as well. And then more random test harness type things going on here. This guy, whoever dropped this off was, was you know, a serious hardware hacker, it seems like. Aha, here we go. Here's the PCM CIA cards. Here's that Linksys card, 10100 PC card. This really comes in handy when you're uh, transferring files or trying to transfer files to a laptop in order to get files onto that system when you don't have other things to do it with. And so these go together, the Linksys uh, dongle and the uh, PCM CIA card. And then a couple of wireless cards. Here's a 32 bit uh, wireless card bus adapter. And this one is great. This is a Linksys 2.4 gigahertz uh, wireless adapter, but this is great. You just plug it in, connect to an old access point and away you go. So this, this is really nice to find. And of course, there's another calculator in here. This is an LC Mate electronic calculator. And it looks like it does more than just calculator because it has clock, stopwatch, calculator. Let's see if I can open it here. There we go. It's got this nice little metal case that's solid metal. And uh, it looks like the LCD is, is leaking here or something. So this may not work. But uh, yeah, this guy was definitely a calculator collector. That's for sure. All right, so we're almost down to the end of the box here. Um, there's a random controller for a hard drive, but then there's these actual hard drives here. There's also a floppy drive, three and a half inch floppy drive down here. Here's a development Seagate drive. I don't even know how to hook this up. It says uh, 81195 Seagate model. Oh, this must go with the, uh, this must go with this thing that I pulled out of here. Yeah, it does. So this actually goes on that drive like that plugs in and gets screwed down, and now you have a complete working drive. Interesting. That was off for some reason, but this is model ST5660A. Looks like a 500 megabyte hard drive. I wonder if that would still work if I connected it back up. That would be interesting to try. And then in the bag here, there is a five and a quarter inch floppy drive as well. So that's nice to have. This is a TIAC FD55 GFR. Uh, I believe that this is the one that would do 1.2 megs. Is that right? Do I have that right? I'll look it up and get some information on that. But yeah, nice to have that. I don't know if it's intact. Maybe it's missing the some of the electronics here. I'm not sure, but I could certainly hook it up and try it out. And last but not least, ta -da, there's a, a bunch of floppies in here. So let's just take a quick peek and see what kind of interesting things are in here. Oh, look at this. Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Disc one of eight. So that looks like they're all in there. So I've got a copy of Where in the World is Carmen San Diego on floppy now. Uh, there's also some Adaptec drivers here. In circuit emulator for MS DOS. System Commander. Quick Link 2. Oh, here's a stealth uh, uh, video card driver for Windows 3.1. Looks like there's a number of disks for that. A lot of drivers. This was all drivers. Colorado backup drivers. All right, something with a broken rubber band around it. Ooh, nasty. Oh, uh, there we go. Microsoft Project for Windows um, on floppy disks. I didn't even know they made this with floppy on floppy disks. There's six of those. Another Microsoft Project for Windows on three disks, and then another random disk. So very cool. I actually needed some extra floppy storage. So now I have a ton of drivers if I ever need them and I can use that for floppy storage. So I don't know about you, but I think for $20, I definitely got my money's worth. Uh, I wasn't expecting to find all this other stuff in here. The only thing that I um, uh, knew of immediately was that Creative Sound Blaster and I could kind of see these speakers poking out, but I thought they might just be cheap speakers, but they're actually really nice Yamaha speakers. So 
not a bad haul at all. And that's going to end up this episode. Um, what do you think? Do you remember using any of this stuff? Do you have any more information for me on what some of these things are? Let me know in the contents below. Still waiting for the spin right to finish. It's going to go all night long. But anyway, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to uh, my channel. That'll help boost the channel and allow others to see it. And uh, if you want to support me on Patreon, you can do that as well. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. If you want to support me on Patreon, you can go to patreon.com slash retrohackshack and sign up. End of line.